Hey, John from Superbase here, and today we're going to look at both authentication and authorization in the brand new app directory in Next.js. We're going to configure Superbase Auth to use cookies to store sessions rather than local storage, and how to tell our server components to fetch fresh data whenever the user signs in or out. Now we're going to start from the absolute beginning with this example, but if you wanted to go deeper with the Next.js app directory, check out the links in the description. Okay, let's get into it. Let's start by heading over to database.new to create a new Superbase project. I'm going to call mine cookie blog, but you can call your project whatever you'd like. And let's click here to generate a new secure password. Now make sure you copy this value into a password manager because this is your database password and the only time you'll actually see it. Now I'm going to change the region to Oceana Sydney because that's closest to me and I'm the only user of this application. And now I'm ready to create my project. Now this will take a little bit of time to set up our project, so let's go create our Next.js application while we're waiting. We're going to use mpx to run the create-next-app package. Now we're going to be using the new app directory to create our server components, and so we need to write dash dash experimental dash app to set that flag to true, and then the name of our application is going to be cookie dash blog. Now this is going to step us through some questions for the configuration of our project. We're just going to leave all the defaults. So yes, we want TypeScript, we want ESLint, we would not like to use the source directory, and we're happy with the at symbol for our import alias. And once that's finished, we can change into our new directory and open it up in VS Code. And you'll see we've got our default template here. So if we have a look at app, we can see our landing page here, and we're just going to replace all of this with a really simple component for posts. Now I know blogs are a super boring and overused example, but there are so many new concepts in this video that I wanted the example application to just be as simple to comprehend as possible. So we can check this is working by running npm run dev to start our development server. And then we can head over to the browser and navigate to localhost over port 3000 and see our heading for posts. So let's add some posts to Superbase so we can display them here on the page. So back over in the Superbase dashboard, hopefully we've stalled long enough that your project is up and running. And then if we come across to the table editor and then create a new table, the name of this table is going to be posts. We're going to leave row level security enabled and we'll talk about this soon. And then if we scroll down to our columns, we're going to change the type of our ID to be UUID. And then click these lines here for some options for our default value. And we want to call this UUID generate v4 function, which is going to give us a new unique UUID for each of our posts. Now, if we left the type of this as int, which is the default, our IDs would be like ID1, ID2, ID3. I just like the look of a UUID rather than an incrementing integer for my ID. Now, created at is going to be a timestamp and its default value is using the now function. And so this will just be a timestamp from the moment when we created the record. And if we click this little cog, we can see more options. And I like to untick is nullable because it doesn't make sense for any of our posts to not have a created at time. And now I'm going to add a column for title, which is going to be of type text. And again, I'm going to click this cog and turn off is nullable. So every post should always have an ID, a created at value and a title. Let's click save to create that table. And now let's insert some dummy data. So we'll insert a new row. Now ID and created at are going to be automatically generated. So we just need a title, which can be first post. And then let's click save to insert that row and then create another row for our second post. Now let's display our two posts in our application. So let's start by quitting our development server and running npm install or I at superbase slash superbase dash JS. And once that's finished, we can run npm run dev again. And now we need some environment variables for connecting to our Superbase instance. So let's create a new file in the rootmost point of our application called .env.local. And in here, we want a next underscore public underscore Superbase URL and a Superbase anon key. Now something to call out here is the naming of these two environment variables is important. The next underscore public underscore means that these values will be available anywhere in our Next.js application so server or client side. And once we install the auth helpers package that we'll look at later in this video, it assumes this naming convention. And we can get these values from our Superbase dashboard by going to settings and then API, and then our URL under project URL, we can copy that from here. And then we want our anon public key under our project API keys. So let's copy that one. So let's create a new Superbase client by calling the create client function which comes in from that Superbase JS library. And then this function takes in our Superbase URL and our Superbase key. And so we can access those environment variables by saying process.env.next underscore public underscore Superbase underscore URL. 
and then the same for our anon key. Now TypeScript is not happy because these values might not exist, so we can use the exclamation mark to say these values are going to exist in every environment. We can now get all of our posts from Superbase by saying const data, which we can alias to posts, and that's equal to awaiting a call to Superbase, and we want to query data from the post table, selecting all columns. Now this is saying that we can't use await outside of an async function, and with these new server components in Next.js, we can use the async keyword here, meaning we can fetch our data directly in the component itself and not need to break this out into a separate function like get server side props or something like that. We can just wait until that data comes back from Superbase and then render it out on the page. And so we're gonna use this trick of a pre-tag and json.stringify to pretty print those posts on the page. Let's save this component and then go back to the browser and open up our application and refresh. And now we're seeing an empty array. And so why is this? We know that we have two posts in Superbase. If we go over to our table editor and then our post table, we can see we have our first post and our second post, but neither of these are showing up in our application. And this is because when we were creating our post table, we left row level security or RLS enabled. And what this does is deny all actions by default. So no one can select, insert, update, or delete any of the rows in this table. And this is a great way to ensure our Superbase instance is secure. But if we want to enable one of those actions, like allowing our application to read all of the posts, we just need to write a policy. So we can either click this button here or we can go over to authentication and then policies. And now we can see RLS is enabled for the post table, but we have no policies. So let's create a new policy. And there are some templates for common policies that you might wanna write, but we're gonna create this one from scratch. The name of my policy is going to be anyone can read posts. It's going to enable the select action. I'm going to leave the target roles as the default, which is public which just means this select action is enabled for anyone. And then we have this using expression, which just needs to be a conditional statement that either evaluates to true or false. If it's true, then the user will be able to select this row. And if it's false, then RLS will just continue denying it. And so this runs on every single row you're trying to select. So we could say we only wanted to enable read access where the title column was equal to first post and just enable access for that first post. But in this case, we're just going to say true because we want to enable read access to all of the posts. So we can click review to see the SQL that's generated from each of those fields, and then click save policy to run that SQL against our Superbase database. And now that we have our RLS policy in place, we can go back to our application and refresh, and you'll see we're now getting all of our posts from Superbase. Now by default, anything in the app directory is a server component. And so we can confirm that page.tsx is in fact running on the server by adding a console log here. So let's say console.log, hello. Now, if we go back to our application and open up the console and refresh, we don't see that message printed out. However, if we open up our server console, we can see the message hello is printed out. Now this is great for doing things like fetching data because we no longer need a loading state while we're waiting for that data to come back from Superbase. But if we wanna do client side things like sign our user in or out, or anytime we want to use a React hook, so anything like use state or use effect, we'll see that we can't use these in server components. We get this error saying you're importing a component that needs use state. It only works in a client component, but none of its parents are marked with use client. Therefore, they are server components by default. So if we wanna make this a client component, we need to add the use client statement at the top of our file. But if we do this for our post component, and go back to the browser, we're getting a different error. And so this is saying we're trying to render out a promise, and that's because client components can't be async. And so this async keyword here allows us to wait for promises to be resolved, but we can't do that if it's a client component. So let's undo all of that, and instead go over to our layout.tsx file, and instead make this a client component. Now, if we go back to our application, we'll see that metadata is not actually supported in client components, and so we can just remove this chunk of example metadata, and now we should be seeing those posts again. So layout.tsx is a special type of component called a layout. And so a layout can wrap around other pages. And so imagine this page.tsx component is being rendered as this children prop. So if I wanted to render something above that component, I could say, hello. And then if we look at our application, we'll see the text hello above our posts. And then instead, if I was to put this paragraph below those children, then we'll see it render below the posts. And so we want to render three buttons above our posts, one for sign up, one for sign in, and one for sign out. And so we can declare these three functions above. So we're using Superbase to sign the user up with this email and this super secure password. 
and for sign in, we're signing them in with the same credentials, and then sign out is just signing out our user. And so each of our three functions are using our Superbase client. So let's create that the same way above using the create client function from at Superbase slash Superbase JS. And now if we save this file and go back to our application, we should be seeing these three terribly styled buttons. Now, while this works, it's really important that we only have a single instance of Superbase shared across all of our client components. So we can ensure that this is the case by using useState, which comes in from React. And then if we pass this a function, which then calls create client, then it will return us our getter and our setter for that new variable, but this logic will never run again. And so we can ensure that this Superbase client is only created once, and we're using that single instance throughout this client component. Now, if we were building a more complex application or something that had multiple client components, we would want to share this single instance of Superbase using React context. If you want an example of this pattern, check out the link to the Next.js auth helpers docs in the description. But for this example, we can keep this logic in our layout and keep it simple. So let's check our new authentication is working correctly by refreshing and then clicking this sign up button. And we won't see any feedback in our application because we haven't implemented that. But if we go over to our Superbase instance and go to authentication and then users, we'll see that john at superbase.com is waiting for verification. So this is the email that I got from Superbase and I can click confirm my mail to verify our new user. Now, if we go back to Superbase and click reload, we can see that our user is now verified. And now if we go back to our application and click sign in and then open up the dev tools and go to application and then look under local storage for localhost over port 3000, we'll see this auth token from Superbase, which contains all of the data for our current users session. So now that we have a signed in user, let's modify our RLS policy so that only authenticated users can read posts. So we can do that by going to our Superbase dashboard and then going to authentication and then policies and then editing our existing policy by clicking these three dots and saying edit. Now we can change our target roles from public to authenticated. And this means that this condition will only be evaluated for users who are authenticated. So let's modify our policy name to say authenticated users can read posts and click review to see how our policies are being altered and then click save policy to run that SQL on our Superbase database. Now we can see this applies to authenticated. So if we go back to our application, we can see that we're currently authenticated. So if we refresh our application, we should still be able to see our posts, but we can't. Oh no, what's happened? Damn you RLS. Now the problem here is not actually RLS. It's that our session information is being stored in local storage. And since our component that's fetching data from Superbase is one of those new fancy app directory components, it is by default a server component. So this request is coming from the server, not from the user's browser. And local storage, where we're storing our session, only exists within the user's browser. And so if we want our user's session to be available on the server, we need to use cookies rather than local storage. And thankfully, the Superbase auth helpers for Next.js make this really easy. So let's quit our development server and run npm install or i at superbase slash auth dash helpers dash Next.js. And now we can run our development server again. And then we want to create a new file at the rootmost part of our project called middleware.ts. And so this allows us to run some code for every route of our application. And so in this case, we want to export a function for middleware which takes in the request. We then create an empty response here and use both of those values to create a new Superbase client specifically for our middleware. We then call get session, which refreshes the user's access token if it's expired and then return the response, which will load our posts or whichever route the user is trying to navigate to. Now, the reason that we need middleware is that cookies in server components in Next.js are still read only. So the only way we can create or modify a cookie like set and delete is using middleware. That's a little bit of an under the hood detail. All we really need to know is when we're using the Next.js auth helpers, we need to create a middleware file that uses the middleware Superbase client to call get session. Now we can refactor any of our server components to use the create server component Superbase client function, which comes in from our auth helpers package for Next.js. And if we have a look at the arguments that this one requires, our Superbase URL and a non-key are optional, but we need to pass it a headers and a cookies function. And so we can get rid of our unused create client import and instead import the headers and cookies functions. And they come in from next slash headers. We can then pass in our configuration object here with the headers and cookies functions from Next.js. And now we have a Superbase client that uses cookies. 
And if we go over to our layout.tsx file, where we're creating our other Superbase client, we instead want to create a browser Superbase client, which comes in from our auth helpers package. And we don't actually need to provide it our URL or our anon key because we followed that naming convention. And we can get rid of our unused import from Superbase.js. And now if we go back to our application and clear out the values under local storage and instead look at cookies for localhost over port 3000. Now when we click sign in, we'll see our Superbase auth token. And if we click sign out, it will disappear again. And so now if we click sign in, so we have our auth token and then we refresh the page, we'll see our two posts from Superbase again. So our session data is getting piped through to the server. And then when our server makes a request to Superbase, that session data is piped through. So then Superbase knows that our user is authenticated and our RLS policy says, yep, all good, because authenticated users can read posts. And so we see those posts in our application. Now there's a slight bug that when our user's auth state changes, so when they either sign in or sign out, our server component has no idea that anything's changed. And so it hasn't made another request to Superbase to either get those posts or an empty array. And so we need to refresh our application to see the correct state. And we can fix this in our layout component by using use effect. And this comes in from React and takes a callback function, which we want to run on mount. And then in this function, we can listen to changes to our user's session by saying superbase.auth.on auth state change. And this takes another function, which Superbase will automatically call anytime our user signs in or signs out. And so in here, we basically want to refresh the data. And we can do that by creating a new instance of the Next.js router by calling the use router hook, which comes in from next slash navigation. Make sure you're using this one, which is the new one, rather than the old one, which is next slash router. And now when the state of our user changes, we want to call router.refresh. And then when we call this on or state change function from Superbase, we get back a subscription. So let's say const and then destructure the data that we get back. And then inside there, there is a subscription. And then we can clean up that subscription by returning an arrow function from use effect. And in here calling subscription.unsubscribe. And lastly, we now have an external dependency on Superbase and the router. And so let's add those to the dependency array. Now when we save this file and head back to our application and refresh, as soon as we click the sign in button, we're going to see those posts from Superbase. And when we click sign out, we'll see our empty array. And so now whenever the state of our user changes, our server component is automatically fetching fresh data from Superbase and passing across all that lovely session information in a delicious cookie. And that's how easy it is to configure Superbase auth to use cookies instead of local storage. So our session information is shared across our client and server components. If you want to go deeper with the differences between client and server components, or how to cache that data that we got back from Superbase, check out the links to those videos in the description. Now there are a whole bunch of topics we want to cover with Next.js, especially with everything changing so quickly. So let us know in the comments if there are any specific examples that you want to see. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have that little notification bell lit up so you can hear when those ones drop. And until next time, keep building cool stuff.